welcome to Tumamina Teaching. This is Lesson 2 in Grade 8 Mathematics and today we're going to be looking at like terms. My name is Chris Jacobs and this is Tumamina Teaching. In today's lesson we'll be looking at three key things. One, we're going to be looking at multiple variables. Two, we're going to be looking at like terms. And three, we're going to be looking at simplifying expressions. So from the last lesson we realized we no longer just talk about single variables but we talk about terms. Let's just recap about what are terms. We no longer speak about variables, but we speak about terms. Let's take, for example, 4x cubed. Well, in 4x cubed, the 4 represents the coefficient, the x represents the variable, and the 3 represents the index, the power, or the exponent. If a term does not contain a variable, it is called a constant. Looking at 4x cubed, we see that the x cubed represents x times x times x and the 4 represents x cubed plus x cubed plus x cubed plus x cubed so essentially what we have is that we have 4 times by x cubed we also remember that if we have x to the 5 and there's no coefficient in front of it it means that the coefficient is 1 and if we have a variable for example a and there's no exponent, it means that the exponent is 1. We also recap that algebraic expressions is a collection of constants and or variables. In other words, terms. If we have one term, then the expression is called a monomial. If we have two terms, then the expression is called a binomial. If we have three terms, it is called a trinomial. And if there are four more terms, it is called a polynomial. Our first thing for this week is looking at multiple variables. Terms can contain more than one variable. For example, AB or 2XY or MN squared. Let's take a look at each one in turn. AB simply means that you have A multiplied by B. 2YZ simply means that we have 2 multiplied by Y multiplied by Z. Now that brings us on to mn squared. Hmm. mn squared means that you have m times n squared. And from the breakdown that we saw just a little earlier, so mn squared breaks down to m times n times n. If we have xy in brackets and that's squared, it means that we have xy multiplied by xy. If we break it down further, it means that we have x times y times x times y. Let's consider the expression ab plus b squared. Well, the first thing we ask is how many terms are in the expression? Well, ab is one term and then we have b squared. So we have two terms in the expression. Thus, it makes it a binomial. Now we're going to start replacing a and b with numbers. So if a was equal to 3 and b was equal to 5, what would the value of the expression be? This simply means that we have to replace a with 3 and b with 5. And so we get 3 multiplied by 5 plus 5 squared. 3 multiplied by 5 gives us 15 and 5 squared gives us 25. So 15 plus 25 gives us a total of 40. Let's consider a more complicated example. We now have xy plus yz, all in brackets, minus xz. The first thing we're going to ask ourselves is, how many terms is in the expression? And we remember from the last lesson that brackets gather together terms. So in essence, we have one term in xy plus yz, and we have another term in minus xz. Thus, there are only two terms in the expression, thus making it a binomial. We're going to now replace the variables with numbers. So if x was equal to 2, y was equal to 7, and z was equal to 3, what would the value of the expression be? Well, what do we have to do? We have to replace x with 2, y with 7, and z with 3. So xy means that we're going to have 2 multiplied by 7. yz means that we have 7 multiplied by 3. And xz means that we have 2 multiplied by 3. 2 multiplied by 7 is going to give us 14. 7 multiplied by 3 is going to be 21. 
And then we're left with the 2 multiplied by the 3 to give us 6. However, there is a negative sign in front of it, which means we have to subtract 6. So we have 14 plus 21 minus 6. 14 plus 21 gives us 35. Minus 6 gives us 29. So if you got that at home, well done. We now get to the second part of our lesson, the like terms. Two or more terms are considered to be like terms if it meets the following conditions. 1. All the variables in the terms must be the same. And 2. The exponents on the variables have to be the same. What do we mean? Let's look at this example using 3x squared. If I gave you three different terms, namely 3y squared, 2x cubed, and 5x squared, which of these three would be considered a like term with 3x squared? Well, if we look at the 3y squared, we notice that only the coefficients are the same. However, the variables are different, so 3y squared and 3x squared are not like terms. If we look at 2x cubed, we realize that even though the variables are the same, the exponents are different. And so, 2x cubed and 3x squared are not like terms. If we look at the last one, 5x squared, and we compare that with 3x squared, we realize that both have a variable of x and both have an exponent on the variable of 2, thus making 3x squared and 5x squared like terms. Let's take a look at the next example. The AB squared. If we compare it to these three other terms, which of the three would be considered a like term with AB squared? If we compare AB squared to A squared B, even though the variables are the same, the exponents on the variables are different. So in AB squared, the exponent on A is 1. However, in A squared B, the exponent on A is 2. And so they cannot be like terms. If we compare AB squared to 2AB, we notice that even though the variables are the same, the exponents again are not the same. And so they are definitely not like terms. If we look at negative 3AB squared, even though the coefficients are different, the variables are the same, and the exponents on the variables are the same. Both A's have an exponent of 1, and both B's have an exponent of 2. Thus, Negative 3ab squared and ab squared are like terms. Let's take a look at a last, more complicated example. 4m squared n cubed. Wow, that's a pretty big one. Let's compare it with these three terms. If we compare it to 2mn cubed, even though the coefficients are different and the variables are the same, the exponents on the variables are different, and so they are not like terms. If we compare this to 3p squared n cubed, we notice immediately that the variables are not the same, and so they are not like terms. Finally, we compare it to negative 6m squared n cubed, and we see that the variables m and n are the same, and we realize also that the exponents on the m are both the same and the exponents on the n are both the same. Thus, 4m squared n cubed and negative 6m squared n cubed are like terms. We come to our last part of the lesson, simplifying expressions. Simplifying expressions is as simple as going from a sad face to a happy face, to going from not wanting to do anything to wanting to do something, but more especially it's going from a very complicated algebraic expression to either a single term or multiple terms, depending on the expression. How do we simplify expressions? Well, it's quite simple. We follow a recipe. Step one, all we have to do is gather the like terms. So if we look at this long expression, we see that we have some like terms in 4m and 3m. We also have like terms in 8n and negative 6n. Remember, when we look at terms, we have to consider the sign with the coefficient. So if we gather 4m and 3m together, they make 7m. If we gather 8n and negative 6n together, that gives us positive 2n. And what we're left with 
is plus 2m squared. Step 2. Place your answer in descending order of power. Now, if we look at this, we realize that we have m squared, we have m, and we have n. So how would we know which one to put first? Well, it's quite simple. A simple rule of thumb would be to break it down first in alphabetical order and then in power order. So first in the letters of the alphabet and then from biggest to smallest, from highest number to the lowest number. So what we'd end up with is 2m squared plus 7m plus 2n. We realize that first we have the m's and then we have the n's. Step 3 is the most delicious one of all. Once we have seen our answer, we let it be. Let's take a look at this massive one. Well, we see that this one is a polynomial because it has more than four terms. Instead of panicking and running away and saying that algebra is not for us, what we'd rather do is we first gather the like terms. So we look at 3xy squared and we notice that that can be grouped with positive 2xy squared. We can gather them together to give us 5xy squared. Then we look that we have 6xy and negative 2xy. We can gather those together to give us positive 4xy. Finally, we realize that we have negative 2x squared y and we have negative 4x squared y. We can gather these two to give us negative 6x squared y. Once we have our answer, we have to now place it in descending order of power. Remember, we first have to place it in alphabetical order and then in power order. So first our x's have to come and then our y's. This leaves us with negative 6x squared y plus 4xy plus 5xy squared. If we look at the x's, we're going from x squared to x and then finally to x. However, if we look at the y's, we're going from y to the power of 1 to y to the power of 2. If we look at the x, we can see the x decreasing in powers, going from 2 all the way down to 1. And if we look at the y's, we can see that the y is increasing in power from 1 to 2. So we realize that the power order is important. For this final example, as difficult as it looks, all we need to do is apply our rule about gathering like terms. So we realize that all three are the like terms because they both have a variable of x and each variable has an exponent of 2. So we can gather 7x squared plus 4x squared minus 5x squared to give us a total of 6x squared. However, we're not quite done just yet. We still have to square our final answer. So if we take 6x squared and we square it, we realize that we have to take 6x squared times 6x squared. Well, if we take 6 and we square it, that's going to give us 36. And if we take x squared and we square it, it means that we're going to have x times x times x times x. And so our final exponent on the x would be 4. So our final answer would be 36x to the power of 4. To recap the lesson, there's three points we want to make. 1. Terms can contain more than one variable. They can contain two, three, four, or more variables, with each variable representing its own value. Two, like terms. Like terms are terms that contain the same variable and the same exponent. If they are like terms, we can gather them and simplify them by adding them or subtracting them from each other. Number three, simplifying expressions. We simplify expressions by gathering like terms. Once we gather like terms and we have our final answer, we have to put them in descending order of power, but also in alphabetical order to make our answer simple. Thanks for watching lesson two of Tumamina Tichi. Have a great one.